Welcome back to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner Classics Class Non Classic. This is episode number six hundred and twenty two and double shot number six hundred and twenty two. Uh no, six hundred and eight six hundred and sixteen and double shot number six uh five hundred and twenty two. Uh huh. If if you're noticing like why in the world is the six one like that doesn't make more sense. Yeah, I made a typo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I made a typo. So yeah, it is definitely five hundred and twenty one. 522, not 622, 522. Yeah, that was that my part. Just corrected it. All right. Now, like I said last episode, I'm covering two question trades. And here they are. Volume 4 and 5. Let's start with Volume 4. Welcome to Oz. Yep. This book collects uh, the question ongoing series that only lasted for a few short years. This collects issues 19 to 24. Yeah, that's the thing with each one of these trades. They only collect six issues of the whole series. Yep, if you're wondering how many the series published, six trades. How long the ongoing series lasted for? 36 issues and had two annuals published. Plus a, plus a quarterly series called Question Quarterly. So like that. Yeah. Simply put, for these for these two trades... It's just basically the questions, well, activities in Hub City. The The entire series is written by Denny O'Neill, and artwork is done by Dennis Cohen, Rag Meyer, and that's just in the uh, first volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dick Giordano does some inking for this thing. Uh, if you wonder who does the cover, that's Doris Cole and Bill, and Bill St. Kevich. Yeah, well, they they do it's issues 19 and 21, 24. Rick Meijer, who is the anchor, he does the cover for issue 20. In here, Riddles, it's Dennis Conway, who does issues 25 and 27, 30. And Bill Wright, this is issue 26. They do the interior work in here. And it's the same thing for the, for the covers as well. Yep. In this book, they also have the return of Lady Shiva. Yep, Lady Shiva popped up a few times throughout the Questions ongoing series. I should also point out, though, that this series is for mature readers. Yep, this is pre-Vertigo days. Yeah, on the covers, they even put the covers in the trades. This is what the covers look like. Yeah, even Green Arrow had this, too. Yeah, it was this series, Green Arrow and Swamp Thing had these style covers. Look at this. Uh, suggestive for mature readers. Yep. Basically put, this is the pre-Vertigo days. Now, the question himself is a character created by Steve Ditko for Charlton Comics, who DC got. Though DC didn't do a lot with him when they got with when they got him. They did a lot with Captain and Blue Beetle, but not the question. It almost seems like the question was like an afterthought. Though Daniel knew himself did a fantastic job writing this character for this ongoing series. Of course, when he had his annuals, he had two of them. So, for some reason, this trade series doesn't collect the annuals. Yeah. The annuals themselves are part of crossovers. The first one, called Fables, which is a cross between not only the first annual of the question, but also the first annual for Tetsu Comics and the first annual for Green Arrow. The second annual was a crossover with the second annual of Green Arrow, and the third annual of Green Arrow pretty much picked up right where this series left off. Yeah, and this also was like politics and the fact at the end of uh, this volume right here, the mayor of Hub City gets shot by her predecessor. Well, she's, um, yeah, she, she, who was a uh, love interest, possible love interest for the question. And she gets shot and it's her, and get this, the prime suspect in her attempted murder is her husband, who was a predecessor as the mayor. I'm not kidding. That is literally how they write right in here. Vic Sage is a anchor man. Not a hard nose nose reporter. He's an anchor man, which makes sense as the '80s. Why not? Superman switched from being a regular newspaper reporter to being an anchor man in the '70s. So why not do with the question? Though I think in the case of the question, it actually makes sense to do it for him. Clark can't really then make much sense to do it with him. But at least the question makes sense because. He does live in a much more harder crime city than Metropolis, which is basically a, kind of like a semi-paradise. 
compared to Cobb City, which is kind of like Gotham in a way. Mm-hmm. Also, they even have one issue where the Riddler, yes, the Riddler makes a camp, makes an appearance for one issue. Even James Gordon, the commissioner of the GCPD, he makes appearance as well. Despite being part of Mature Readers, this is still part of this universe. Well, pre-Flashpoint anyways. It's part of the universe that existed from 1986 to 2011. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I like this version of the question a lot better than the one they had in the cur- in the current continuity, where they made him a supernatural-based character for no reason. Also, I like this character also because, here's the reason, his mask is awesome. Yeah, it's actually a plastic. Yep, it's a plastic mask. It just covers his face, and yes, he can actually breathe while wearing that thing. Mm-hmm. Overall, these are two really good trades, and when Lei Shi show up in here, also, she looks like this. This is, yeah, this is Lady Shiva. Yes, the same woman who is the mother of Cassandra Cain, a.k.a. the second Batgirl, also orphan. Yep, and yes, they even reference the fact in the issue of the Tita Comics, I believe it was not in the recent issue that just came out today, but it was in the last issue they referenced the fact that in, the, in another universe, she and Stephanie Brown were Batgirls. Yep. Oh, does he wonder who her father is? It's the, it's still David Kane pre-Flashpoint. Yeah, both pre- and post-Flashpoint, it's David Kane, and I'm so happy the fact that Lady Shiva was still kept as her mother. So at least Cassandra Kane got her, her muscle left intact, though they did change her kind of a mild backstory over here. Her being raised by the character Mother from Batman Robert Eternal. Those of you wondering why Lady Shiva's here, and if you read these two trades, you're like thinking, okay, how in the world does Lady Shiva know the question? Well, they met early on in the series, and she's the one who recommended her him to go to Richard Dragon go some training. Apparently, he got rusty toward the end of the series. Yeah, but here's something quite weird, though. After the series ended, the character retired. Popped up now and again. And his last parents was back in the 2000s before Flashpoint. Yeah, that's simply what it is when it comes to that. But what do I get these two traits? I get them both a, a 9.5 out of 10. They're really, really good. I really wish that the store I bought these from had the other traits. Because they were great in my collection. Because I love this character and I love this series. I know, I think it's uh, I think his name is uh, Gamut896, I think it is. He actually has all six trades of this, and he has done reviews of it. It's just something, though, that uh, DC has never given that series second printing. I figure, though, the question is still a popular character to this day, and yet he's never got a second printing for a trade series. No, he hasn't for some reason. Yeah, it's weird, the fact he hasn't. I would think, though, that it would be an interesting idea, especially since, well... It'd be pretty simple to do it. They're probably doing just three instead of doing six volumes. They're probably doing three and throw in well, not only the like have like the first tray, collect the first twelve issues, along with the first annual for the series, along with annual for along with first annual for Tepta Comics and and uh, Green Harrow. And of course doing a couple issues of Green of the question quarterly. And second volume be thirteen to twenty four and then second annual and of course you have a green arrow. And then pretty much the next volume will pretty much have 25 to 36. And I'll throw in the third day of a Green Arrow. And the rest of the Green Lantern, uh, the Question Quarterly series. And the Question Returns one shot. That's how I would do it. Oh yeah, and have the third volume collect the Question Mini series in the early 2000s. Yeah, but that's all I would do with have just being like four four trade series. Instead of having, th- instead of having six. But that's just what I would do anyways. But, uh, yeah, not much else to say. Two really good trades. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is episode number 617 and double shot number 523. And that one, yeah, it's going to be a trade about us, us collecting a series that came out 12 years ago. Excuse me. And ten year, two years ago, I started a, re- a sort of a 10th anniversary review of this crossover, and now I actually have the tray. I, I've reviewed most of the crossover already. I kind of figured, oh, why not do a review of the trade, uh, the review of the main series? So, you'll find out my thoughts in the next episode, but the next video going up after this one, probably a little bit later, will be my review of Tokugou Re. Yes, that's next. 
and then two more comic corners after that. Okay, but until we see you on my next video, bye.